tuned into the show that informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report. The Northwest Race Report. Brought to you in part by True Tech Automotive, Vancouver, Washington. Home of the In the Family Racer Discount. And by Scott Seal Coat and Striping. For over 25 years, whether it's sealing or striping, you can count on Scott's. And by Product41.com. The Northwest Race Report is heard exclusively at TerryBridgesRacing.com. And now back to your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges, Glenn Tower, and Jeff Eden. What is going on, racers? And welcome to another edition of the Northwest Race Report. Happy belated, well, not belated, but happy after Christmas. Hopefully, uh, everybody had a super, super duper uh, Christmas. How about you guys? Did you have one, Jeffrey? Oh, you bet you we did. Snowball fights with the grandkids. No way, really? Oh, yeah. That was hammer down. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. Well, you know, tonight, uh, this kind of after Christmas thing, it's kind of a Merry Christmas for us. Uh, I don't know if you can see us, hey, 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 hey. but uh, I don't have it up high enough. But um, our, uh, so I'm going to quit it. I'll do it next week. Uh, our guest tonight is going to be Chris Harris as we continue our segment on tire science the science of tire prep and i am just stoked that he is on talk to him today he, he was been a little under the weather um but first things first i am your horsepower and performance host terry bridges and sitting in with me in the studio ho 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 merry christmas to mr glenn lippy tower what's going on lip it's all good in the hood tonight and Old Gimpy, old Gimpy, old Gimpy, old Gimpy, old Gimpy, who's getting better and better and better. It's the loader, Jeff Eden. What's going on, Jeffrey? Oh, you know, it's it's a good day. It is a good day. Yeah, I got I pretty much got released, and I get to go back to work on Tuesday. Oh boy, half day. You are. Oh yeah. Hey, is that going on? Hey, let me let's do this. Uh, let's see. Uh, no, no. I got to no I'm going to discard it cuz it's junk. So, I will uh I'll do it next week where I can get the phone up a little higher. Um Dan Watkins. Who's P1 lip? There you go, Dan Watkins, Brent Meyer are, are coming you sure? in second uh, oh, and yeah. Daryl Kelso's number 3. D DK getting it done. Mm -hmm. Hey, what'd you get for Christmas? Uh unmentionables. <laughs> Why are they unmentionables? Because my wife gave them to me. Oh. <laughs> would those wouldn't be like so, favors, would they? Very much so. So uh, in, in our house, we uh, the wife and I, we don't have any kids or anything like that. So we don't buy stuff for each other. If we want something, we just go, we go get it. And so we don't, we don't do that. Um, what I will say is uh, her mother um, uh, gives us a stipend, a, a, an allowance each year. And what we do, this is kind of a fun part, is what we do is we go buy what we want and then we, we wrap it up and then we bring it to her house on Christmas Day and uh, she opens up to see what she bought us. And her 92-year-old mother uh, loves that. So, you know, I, I got a uh, an alarm system and uh, remote start and all that kind of stuff for my work van, which is, uh, you know, it very much needs. So uh, that was that was what I got this year um, for, for my Christmas. Wow. Well, you know, that brings up a good point because I was looking today. Little tip for you guys. Um, because Lippy, this especially reminds me of you. Um, TrailerAlarms.com. There you go. Max security and theft prevention through the latest technology. You can call toll free eight seven seven six zero four seven three eight one, or you can uh, you can just go to TrailerAlarms.com. They have a uh, ProTech, uh, Trailer Dog, Dewalt, and GPS tracking. So I thought of you when I saw that, and I thought, well, you know what. It's getting to be BK time. Guys are going to be bringing their trailers down. Lots of uh, stuff. 
Hopefully they don't mount any speakers up there. <laughs> but uh, cuz they'll come back broken half. I I can't agree more with that though. I mean, it's a great reassurance. Uh noise is always a great deterrent. So mine uh I put two alarm um sirens on it. One external and one internal. So even if they find my external one and are able to do something with it, there you know, there's still one internal. And uh, I did motion and uh, heat seeking on mine, so you know it's it's well worth the money. It, it truly is. It's a it's a great deterrent uh, once they see the blinking lights uh, and and all the locks that I highly recommend. Yep. Well, not only that, it's like when I did that series on the trailers. Take your Take and put a number on top of that trailer. There you go. Yeah, Here, that, that put, makes it. I know. You know. Now that we've totally given it away, but <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, that's uh, that's all right too, though. Well, we just what seen uh, just last week. Uh, I'm on quite a few um, Facebook pages, and somebody in California just posted something up. They came across a trailer in the middle of the desert, all by itself. Is this your trailer? You know, it's been here for three days. So you know, it's obviously somebody got something stolen, and they just drove it out to the desert and gutted it and left it. So. Yeah. Back wow, at, unbelievable. Back there at Gateway at the they where they just had that Gateway Nationals deal. Most all most all the rigs were inside. They had enough that they had to park some outside and those who were outside got vandalized. Yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah, there's no respect for any of that stuff, that's for sure. No, there is no respect. There is no respect. Um yeah, this is crazy. So yeah, I uh I'm not sure why it's doing that, but I'm going to see here. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, let, take it away for a second, would you? Sure. Well, uh, on on tap tonight is going to be, if you haven't seen it or haven't heard about it, is uh, going to be Chris Harris, and he is the right-hand man of uh, the gentleman we had on last week um, from, from Track Tack. So last week we had the chemist portion of it, or the, uh, I like to call him the mixologist. I know that is a bartender, but uh, that's in go-karting. He is our mixologist. He, uh, he, he mixes up all the elixirs that uh, most of us use in the karting world. But uh, we're going to have his, his right-hand man on tonight, who um, actually is, I believe, a go-kart racer. So he uh, he's a little bit more in tune, we'll say, to what we do. So uh, it's going to be very interesting to uh, be picking his brain as our night goes on. I do believe that Terry's going to be uh, giving him a jingle once we get ready to get there. Uh, and I'm not sure what uh, Terry's doing over there now to get us ready. Well, I, I just... Um... I just saw Jason. He says, oh, it's cutting in and out, you know, and, and, but I don't want to fool with it because uh, it seems to be working just fine here. So I don't know. Uh, I, I know the day that uh, I stayed home and was dealing with my mom, it was cutting in and out that day, too. So I'm not sure why what, it does what do you, that. What do you mean that day? Well, that was the one where we had all that bad one. Yeah. No, was that? Yeah. That was where, remember, I was showing you the drops on the lines where it was just hammering completely out yeah wasn't lippy here with that no no he was gone yeah that was every, the one everybody kept saying lippy's gone here's the problems <laughs> let's see jason well, let's see who this is i wonder who this could be oh, oh butt dial don't don't answer it yep it's gonna be porn.com yeah no kidding <laughs> we, we don't we don't need that jason what what do you mean bailey's all excited about bk uh oh what did she get she got a ride I'm going to see you this weekend. I hope you got something good for me. I -E well, while you guys are still BSing. Oh, oh, Mike Shorn in the house. Way to go, Mike Shorn. All right. Uh, former president of PKA, Portland Carney Association. So, uh, oh, Chuck nice. Jones in the house. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. Chuck Haven't Jones Automotive. Michael so, Shorn. Swing, swing, swing. Michael. So, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to get Chris Harris on the line. Mr. Chizzy. And Jeremy Brown, good to see you, everybody. Sean Carr, I still have got a uh, stagger tape for you, Mr. Carr. Are you going to be down in uh, Salem this weekend or maybe not till the 15th? Mm, Wayne Thompson, Brian Rushing. Hello. Oh, there's my man. We're ready to go. And we are going to get after this, so hang tight. Here we go. Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. Well, he is the guru. 
He is the man at Track Tack. He is the uh, head tire specialist. He's the uh, boy. I don't even know. He's the kind of the jack of all trades. His name is Chris Harris. Welcome to the show, Mister Harris. How's it going? It's going really good, man. Um, really glad you're here. Uh, this is well, part- thanks for having me. Yeah, and as you know, this is part two of uh, our tire science segment. And this is all about the science of tire prep. So, uh, without do you actually? I do have a question. Do okay. you, have you raced before? I mean, have you? Did you race go karts? Oh yeah, yeah, I raced up until about uh, probably three years ago, three or four years ago. Oh. Um, I got back out of the seat full time. I raced a couple times last year, but I've kind of hung it up. Right. Did you ever do any UAS racing? Or was it all clone stuff, or what did you do? No, I did some UAS racing, too. You um, did? Yeah, I didn't do a whole lot. I raced for probably, I don't know, I probably raced for about a solid year full-time in the UAS. Um, what kind of motor did you have on it? Um, it was actually a, um, it was a Wankel. Oh, Wow. Yep. Sweet. Yeah, it was actually, uh, we kind of went in together with uh, Mike Yow. It was his motor package and my cart and all that stuff. And we we put a little deal together and run for a year. Well, that isn't a bad, that isn't a bad guy to get hooked up with, is it? Oh, definitely not. Definitely no. not. Now, if it wasn't for the Owls, I probably would have never had the opportunity to ever ride one. Yeah. Um, and they're fun. And, you know, back then, the UAS was big on the East Coast. Now it's kind of falling off a little bit especially around in the carolinas but um i think the first race i ever run in the uas it was a quarter points race and there was probably 20 25 of them wow boy you don't see that too often anymore unless it's a no. national or something but yeah definitely not here in the southeast yeah or the or the big o maybe huh yeah, I'm not even sure how many they had the big ogres. I don't year. think that, I bet they haven't had 25 in a couple of years. I mean, I'd be surprised if they did, but yeah, I have no idea. I don't even remember looking. So we've got our listeners out here, and they, they got the they got their beginning education from Randy last week from the from the chemist. But my question to you is, what when you when you arrive at a track? I mean, if somebody were to say, "Oh, okay, Chris." Um, when I, you know, I am totally green. I want to do this. I want to learn it. But when I get to the track, what is the first thing I need to do? If, especially if I, maybe I've never been there or I've only been there a couple times, or I, I don't know, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe if you've been there several times, is there, is there a, a sequence or something that, you know, you should start things off with? Um, well, I mean, Typically, you're going to start off with practice um, on a tire that's... I usually like to aim for a harder tire than what I think it's going to take, um, you know, when we're practicing uh, and try to try to gauge, you know, because the racetracks are typically going to come around. They're going to start off a little slicker in practice and then start to come around as qualifying or heat races and then, you know, continually to get better. Some racetracks, once you get more towards later in the night, they'll fall back off. Some will continue to get better. Um, just depends on the racetrack. Um, so really I like to just kind of gauge where I'm at as far as, you know, try to try to go a little bit too far on the tire as far as too hard throughout practice. Um, you know, that way I'm never caught too soft. Gotcha. That's really the way I like to try to do it. I mean, you know, a lot of places we go to now, we really, I mean, most tracks, especially if, you know, if you race around a certain area, you kind of have an idea of what you're going to need when you show up there. And, you know, a lot of times now we use practice for scuffing tires. I mean, that's the only reason why we ever go out and practice is to scuff tires. Um, Just... You know, you're not going to tell a lot by a go kart or your tires or anything else in practice. Okay, so so you're saying basically that that's not going to be a good judge of whether or not you're fast or not. Well, uh, just the 
some racetracks come around pretty good in practice. Um, most of the ones over here, you know, they use a lot of calcium. Um, it takes it a little while for the racetracks to come in. If you have a chance to go out that last time on the racetrack in practice, you know, you pretty much got a good idea where the racetrack's going to be as far as beginning of qualifying. Right. So, you know, that's why unless know, they, people don't go. Unless people they tear it up the next day, right? Unless they tear it up the next morning, which is which Correct. has happened. <laughs> wow. Interesting. So, so really, when you get there, it, it's not so much – you don't really even – need to worry about the racetrack per se that much you just need to get out get some time on it and wait until later on before you start making any hardcore decisions is that a oh yeah fair yeah. assumption well, i mean it, you know if you show up to the racetrack and you see that you can that you walk out there and you're gonna leave footprints in the racetrack you know you're just gonna take a pretty a pretty soft tire um you know there's no coming back from that but you know n- 90% of the time, you know, you can walk out there on that racetrack and kind of see how the groove's taken and stuff and practice and and judge what kind of tire you're going to be on for the rest of the night. Got it. So is it safe to say then a, a soft surface is a soft tire and a hard surface is a hard tire then? Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of guys, some of the guys get it backwards. Wouldn't you say, I mean, sometimes they get a real dry, slick track or whatever, and they want to go with a super soft tire because they think yeah. that that's going to get better grip. Well, it just depends on how dry, slick. I mean, I've seen some racetracks that get so dry, slick that it doesn't matter if you put on a tire checking 20 or a tire checking 50. It's going to run about the same. The tires checking 20 are just going to run two laps in and slide the whole rest of the race and tires checking 50 are going to slide for the first 15 laps so i mean it just depends on how slick the racetrack is i've seen some pretty bad dry slick conditions to where it really doesn't matter what you put on uh that's very rare but i have seen it before right so then so then you, you okay so we, we've gone through practice and and we're pretty sure we've we've got the right tire on it whenever so is there a I mean, I don't know. I mean, this may be a dumb question, but I mean, is there a secret to to keep up with the racetrack? I mean, are you are you constantly out there looking at you know? So your heat's done, okay? So are you out watching the next guys and the next guys and the next guys to see what? Oh yeah, absolutely. Keep definitely keeping track of lap times. Um, you know, just when you keep an eye on lap times and you see the racetracks either picking up or slower down. I mean, that's a perfect indication of whether it's getting more grip or less grip. So, um, you know, if you, if you're out there and and lap times are continually dropping, um, you know that the racetrack's getting more grip to it. So you need to go to either back off on less aggressive prep or go to that harder tire. Got it. So, Talk to me about durometer. I mean, it, it, I, I, I hear that it, it's important. Uh, I hear, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, does it? Yeah, I definitely would say it matters. Um, durometer, to me, plays more of an effect on the softer racetracks and the softer tires. Um, you know, on a decent to good racetrack you're going to run a tire that's going to durometer anywhere between 48 and 54 90 percent of the time so i mean in between that area if you hit or miss on a on a pretty good racetrack it's you know by two points it's not going to mess you up terribly but when you're dealing with that tire that's between 30 and 35 a couple of points is definitely going to change how everything reacts got it so well you know like well lippy talk to me remember uh let's just talk about like bk uh what was it bk7 or bk9 you know Diotti, remember when diotti ran so bad remember he went straight to the back he said yeah we 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 missed it on tires yeah w- would that be is that duro maybe then 
I mean, he didn't get it wasn't soft enough or wasn't hard enough or or is that still too yeah, much on the likely. prep or, you know, most likely. I mean, out there, you know, I think especially UAS racers, they they have that mentality that you have to run such soft tires on those things. And really, it's the exact opposite. Um, I mean, every time that I ran UAS and like if I ran UAS and ran stock in the same day, I was always five to seven points harder on the UAS than I would be on a stock. Um, because those things, they punish the tires so much. You know, if you've got a tire that's too soft, I mean, all the US, UAS go cars now are, are, um, are weighing so much that, you know, most, I mean, most UAS cars out there are 430 to 460 pounds and, um, and, uh, you know, all that horsepower, it just, you're running lower air pressure and it just, it's hard on the tire. Right. So therefore, you know, you do have to run that harder compound the tire to keep the tire from going away on you. So now, is is there is there an air pressure that you you say, man, don't don't ever go below this, or or don't really ever go above that? Uh, no, I mean it just depends on really the class that you're running. The uh, um, you know, I mean, as far as UAS. I mean, I've run as little as three pounds, and I've run as much as seven or eight pounds. Um, so, so when would you when would you run when would you run three psi, for example? Uh, it would have to be something that's extremely low bite. You know, very wet, slick. Something you're trying to get a hold of. Absolutely, yes. Whereas we've when you're been running- down to. We've run down at like Patriot with the big O runs. Um, I've been up six, seven pounds on the UAS there. But that was running the Wankel, um, you know, weighing at 430, 440 pounds back then. Right. So let, let me ask you, I, I, I know when, when, when I used to road race, when we used to road race on the pavement, when, when, it, when it would rain and it would be real slick, we would always go up on the air pressure and and the and the thought was because it left a less of a patch to skid around on that slick and on that watery surface so, yeah so I how does that, that how, how, how does that differ from dirt then i mean um, it's just the basically just the deflection on the tire i mean that's the same way with um it's the same way running on dry you know asphalt you go up you go up on air pressure, it has less deflection of the tires. The tire is, you know, is pushed down into the asphalt. That's not going to give, um, and it creates more grip. Uh, dirt, I mean, it. when you're running on something that doesn't have the grip like dirt and you bump the air pressure up and doesn't allow that tire to actually conform to the racetrack, you lose grip. Aha, uh-huh. and 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 so sidewalls then become very important on, on on the dirt. Then correct? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that's you know as far as carding, I mean that's your that's your springs, your shocks is is the sidewall of the tire. For sure. Now, what about the width of the tire? You know, I look at some of these guys and they run like a log on the right front. You know, it's like it's it's like an eight hundred on the right front. I mean, is that you think that's, that's hugely necessary? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, to get the 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 way most go karts are designed today, we're running such high cross, high left. I mean, we're basically putting everything on the left rear. Um, so I mean, yeah, you're. You know, you always hear go karts nowadays. They always have a trouble with pushing. You know, used to we never go karts never had an issue turning. We was always free and trying to tighten them up. Now, I mean, the biggest complaint is go kart pushes. So you don't, you very rarely hear of go karts that are just so free that you can't ever get it to calm down. Um, so yeah, I mean, having that big wide tire on the right front definitely 
helps the go kart turn. So basically, it's sticking it, and then everything's rotating around it. Correct. What's your most common question you get? You know that that people call you up and 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 ask you on the on the most basis. Um, I mean, probably one of the most common preps or one of the most common questions we have on prep is, you know, the fact that we do manufacture a lot of different tire treatments and what's best. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's a very hard one to answer i mean i got an email from a guy today that that said hey you know i race such and such what's the best kind of treatment you have for me well i mean that doesn't tell me anything no not at uh, all. there's a there's a lot of variables i mean you can't just say hey i race go-karts and i use maxis or i use burris or whatever what's my what's the best prep because i mean humidity for one, there's, surface, there's not everything <laughs> basically the you know having that magic prep is 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 not out there it's non-existent it's it's basing building the entire program is what is what works the best i mean there's a lot of people that have different programs and do things a different way um and you go to any major big money race across the country um you're going to see the top 10 guys are all promoting different stuff, doing things different. They all have their own little tire program deal and they're all within a half a 10th of each other. Yes. So it's, I mean, I, I'm not going to say there's a magic treatment. It's just, um, it's your process is what makes more speed than anything. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So in your product line, what is your most frequently used that you 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 either use or recommend the most? Our black sand is the most commonly used product, hands down. So and that's something that you can use on a weekly basis and you can also use trackside, is that not correct? That's correct. Yeah, a lot of it's gone more towards trackside. Um you know, back when Back when Randy first came out with all the track tech products, it was it was more along the lines of using those products like the blue, the black sand, the red, all that during the week. And then at the racetrack, everybody was just using the orange. Um, now, you know, everybody, I don't know if it's just the tires or, or what, but everybody's kind of evolved more to using the more aggressive treatments at the track and the lighter treatments during the week. Um, you know, this is for good racetracks, not low bite stuff. I mean, low bite stuff, you're going to have to treat the tire during the week to build a lot of grip in it and soften it and everything else. Um, but, you know, using something like our AT2, which is, you know, a very popular product during the week. And then at the racetrack, you know, usually a black sand, some kind of black sand mixture is what people are going to wipe. And so when you say wipe, that means like you're just going to wipe it down, and that that's just going to give it some some stick, right? Kind of like a yeah. That's that's just your top. That's just your top grip, your top bite. I mean, that's what's going to fire the tire off. Um, you know, it's not penetrated down into the rubber like your weekly stuff is. That once that tire gets up to speed and 10 laps into the race, all that stuff that you put on the tire 20 minutes before you went out is gone. Um, you know, that's just helping that tire get up to speed. So what you've wiped during the week is then what, and also your inside is what's going to take over for the rest of the race, you know, for the other 10 laps or so. Okay. Yeah. And especially once you hit a caution or so that outside's done. Yeah, you can't um, rely you're basically, on Basically, you're relying on your inside and, and what's deep down inside the rubber to help get that tire back going again after cautions. Uh-huh. So, you know, it was my, under, or at least I was told a while back, because I, I did big cars for a bit, and one of the Goodyear reps on the West Coast, his name was Tom Elam, and, you know, he said, uh, hey, man, you know what you need to do is you need to, you need to put some xylene in, inside it and you know, roll the tire and let it, let it go through. And I was like, wow, 
Really? He says, yeah, you don't want to put it on the outside because, you know, probably half of it's going to evaporate. And, and, and maybe the other half, you know, gets down in there. But if you put it in the tire, it's got to work its way all the way out through. That was yeah. how that was how I was taught. But yet you talk to Randy and he says, well, it, it all depends. Some preps you don't want to go through there because it affects the actual core to the tire. Yeah, I mean, something like xylene, that's a really, I mean, it's a fairly fast evaporating chemical. So, you know, I mean, everybody knows what acrosol is. I mean, xylene it makes up the most, the biggest part in acrosol. Um, so that particular chemical, yeah, if you just try to apply it straight to the outside of the tire, it's going to evaporate fairly quickly. Um, so coming from the inside out, that's definitely, you know, that's definitely going to be better. You're definitely going to get more use out of the chemical coming from the inside out than you would from the outside. Now, you know, everything else that we put on the outside of the tire, it, the evaporation rate is very slow. Um, that's why we mix it with Acrosol or, or Quick Dry or something of that nature to help it to penetrate faster. Because what, you know, our products are slow. They are slow to evaporate. I mean, there's a lot of our products that will not evaporate. There's nothing in there to evaporate. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. So is there a, so like if, if, if I called you up and, I mean, I know you said, you know, the, the one guy, you got an email today and he says, hey, you know, I, I, I race this kind of track, whatever. And do you have a, a is there a general purpose mixture that you say here's your starting point yeah the majority of the time is there like a a basic good all around hey you know what you you really can't go wrong i mean you're not going to be completely dialed but but for the most part this will get you in in you know in the ball game and then from there you're going to have to mess around and, and try it yourself i mean is there a is there a mixture that you would recommend yeah, I mean, like, just the AT2 product, I mean, you can't go wrong with it. You, you're you not going to get yourself in trouble for it being too much, and it's it's better than nothing. Um, but really, that's going to depend on what kind of, you know, if are you racing Saturday night mud holes or are you racing, you know, national level tracks? You know, if... If you're racing nothing but mud holes, then yeah, there's, I mean, you can take our BTGP red and use that and that will basically cover all your bases. Um, if you're racing that national level, um, that national level, hard, fast racetracks, then something like the AT2 or some pink ruby black sand, you know, those those, just a combination of a couple chemicals will get you anywhere you need to go. Now, now that pink ruby is 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 that's the inside prep, or, or or would you mix that with the black sand and use it as a wipe? Yeah, it's an external. It's uh, it's fairly light. It's a little bit lighter than the AT two. Um, you know, on a really high bite racetrack, we'll use it straight on the outside. Um, but majority of the time, we use it to cut the black sand. Uh huh. It dries. It dries fairly quick. Um, everything remains stable because, like our black sand, if you were to mix that with a lot of different products, it separates. Uh, that's why we tell everybody to keep it. Make sure, like when you mix black sand and acrosol, you keep it shook up because it will separate. Um, so, like that with the ruby, it's it's got some components in there that compatibilize compatibilizes the chemicals. Um, keeps everything sus uh, suspended. Um, so that's that's like our go-to product for mixing at the racetrack to kind of help dilute and to help get the product into the tire. Interesting. Is there a product you recommend for, we'll say, below 40 degrees or at 40 degrees? Yeah. Um, the SQS and the Grape. Both work really well in that cold weather. The, S the grape is more aggressive. It's going to get more softening out of it. Um, the SQS is more just a stronger bite. The SQS will soften, just not nowhere near as much as the grape. 
but the SQS will give a good bite. So is the is the SQS the wipe and the, and the grape? Is that what you do during the week uh, leading up and to the race? Correct. Yeah, like the, the grape will be what we'd use either the grape or the grape and BTGP, the red, mix 50-50 on that lower bite stuff in the winter like that. Um, the only problem is uh, the red, you do not want to use it under 50 degrees. Ah. That's when you need to go back and mix it with the grape or just use straight grape. Okay, hey, and then, like I said, the SQS is a good at the racetrack prep to fire the tire off. Okay, we got a question here from one of our, from Sean Carr. It says, what is the ratio with black sand and ruby? Um, I keep two bottles in my trailer mixed up all the time. One's mixed 50-50. The other's mixed 75-25, um, 75 ruby, 25 black sand. And those two products right there is what I wipe 90% of the time at the racetrack. Bingo. Um, usually in the summertime or when the racetracks have more grip, it's 75, 25. And, you know, cause we really, we don't race on a lot of lower bite stuff. Like not like real low bite, like what you guys are racing on out there. Yeah. Definitely lower bite out there. <laughs> well, you, yep. it, it's, it's, would you consider Salem? Now we only race it in the sun or in the winter. And if we were to race that same racetrack in the summer, would it be, would it be considered a low grip racetrack? Yeah, any way you look at it, uh, Salem's going to be a low grip, and that's not a knock against Salem. It's just more of a dirt than a clay, so there's not going to be a lot of base there to grip from. Uh, and and having them uh, grind it each each and every day, it uh, you're you're peeling off anything that is built up to build grip, whereas other places don't grind them. So the the grip and the rubber continues to build and build and build and build, which gives you m more and more and more and more grip. So that that's one of the reasons. It, why we have such low grip down there and, I, and i'm not knocking it it's a fun racetrack it's it's the way it is and i wouldn't want to change it but um but yeah it, it is considered a low grip okay i think i mean most most racetracks most indoor tracks are lower grip i mean even we run our couple of indoor races over here um throughout the winter and all those racetracks are lower grip because i mean there's there's no sun to help drive the track out there's you know there's usually a concrete floor underneath the racetrack that's going to hold moisture and um you know so it's it's always going to basically uh, you know retain the water and the moisture uh, out there in salem you know it's a little bit different dirt but most of your indoor stuff is low bite uh, there's a couple racetracks that will get pretty good um but they're far and few in between as far as indoor so the salem i mean you know for that time of the year and the weather and everything throughout the winter up there i think the racetrack gets pretty good for what they for what it has to for the environment that it's in yeah it's very racy I, i'm not taking anything away from it i'm just merely saying that we haven't seen the grip you guys see back there by any means. no 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 and i you know if you, most of the time in Salem, you know, I know a lot of guys out there that'll run a tire between 40 and 45 on the durometer. And I mean, to me, that's pretty good to be in the middle of winter and, you know, in a wet climate and cold. And Salem, you know, the dirt that's in there, I mean, it doesn't have a lot of potential to begin with. So. I mean, I think the racetrack does pretty good for what it has to work with. Yeah, I agree. And and to be honest, I think this year it's even it's better than it has been in any of the the past race seasons because uh, there's been a second groove uh, a bit down there, which hasn't always been there. So I'm I'm very thankful for that. And and I think the more racing we get on it, the the better it's going to get for sure. Um, so having said that, you know what. Uh, 
we're going to have to do two different sets of tires down there for sure for this deal um, in the UAS class because we're going to have to have a time in set that, uh, you know, we're only going to get three laps out of and we want them to be there instantly. So to prep a set that's going to be good and run good in three laps and then to have to prep a whole nother set that's going to do the long haul and make all the laps in the in the main of 20 or 25, you know, um, what how would you go about um we'll just start with the uh with the time in tires you know what would you do to them so let's just uh, i'm going to go out on a limb here and say we're going to we're going to run a set of hoosiers so in both of them so what would you do um to prep up a set of hoosiers uh to run the time ins and be good you know they got to be under you from the get go cuz you only get 3 quarters of a lap and you're going into your time in and then you've only got 2 laps to get it good so what would yeah. you do to them? I mean, that's when a uh, softer compound is definitely going to prevail. Um, you know, just trying to get the heat built up into the tire in that short amount of time. And also at the racetrack, you're going to typically wipe a more aggressive prep to get it to go out there and bite the first lap. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, cause you're not worried about it biting in lap five because nope. you don't have a lap five. <laughs> so, you know, typically, like, are you guys going to run, like, the nine-and-a-half Hoosiers? That's typically what they're going to run as far as a Hoosier goes, nine-and-a-half, yes. Yeah, I think that's definitely a lot better tire in the UA, for the UAS than especially what the the tire they have now. It's just too thin um, for UAS stuff. But, well, like, the nine and a half. I mean, that tire now is going to – if you were to go mount those tires up today, they're going to be hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, probably 75 to 80. So it's going to take a lot of work to get them down into that low 40s area, you know, which I would say that you would need to be in for qualifying. I agree. Um, you know, typically on that, like it depends on the the weight and the package. It depend on how much I would roll on the inside. You know, if you're running like a big, heavy Jawa cart, um, you know, I wouldn't put but about three ounces on the inside of them just because you don't, you don't want that tire. You're, you know, you're not running a lot of air, so you don't want that tire to have all the deflection in it. Um, you know, I've seen Jawa stuff break tires. <laughs> I mean, it pops the cords in the tire. Mm-hmm. So keeping the sidewalls fairly stiff, um, you know, I think is better. So having said that then, and this is new to me, and I just picked this up since going to Phoenix, would you would you recommend before you mounted the tire then uh, rolling or wiping the inside of it rather than just injecting it in there and letting it slosh as it may? No, no, I would still, I mean, I like to do everything the same. Okay. So, you know, it's just basically having some kind of structure. So if I'm going to roll one tire one way, I'm going to do every single tire that same way okay. on the same roller on, you know, I'm just a creature of habit. So I like to do everything the same. Um, you know, I would, instead of doing something like that, I would just rather take the tire unrolled on the inside, you know, versus trying to wipe something on the inside. Cause that, you know, it's just hard to know exactly how much you're getting into the tire. Yep. Um, that's why, I mean, when you measure out how many ounces or CCs, however you measure and you put it in the tire, I mean, that's consistency. That tire is going to absorb that much every single time. Mm-hmm. When you go start trying to wipe the inside of the tires, I mean, you don't know if you applied the same amount in every coat and it's just, you know, I don't, I don't like that method. Okay. I'm good with that. I'm just probing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done it before. I mean, I've, I've tried it. I mean, I just never, never seen the benefit of it. No, no. And like I said, I'm just one of those people where I don't know which tire has more prep in it. Does the right rear or the right front have more prep in it? Did I wipe it a little heavier on that one or not? You know, so that's, that always would be in the back of my mind. Gotcha. Um, so would you be but, put? Yeah. Would you be putting the? You said like three ounces then. Okay, so say we're at home and we're working on that new set. Would you be putting three ounces in Monday, Wednesday, Friday? 
Or would you be putting three ounces in every day? Or... No, just three ounces in one time, let them roll. Um, with those Hoosiers, I would do it about a week ahead of time. Um, I mean, my personal preference with those Hoosiers was our SQS on the inside. That was my favorite. Um, you know, you do it a week ahead of time, let them roll for about 24 hours. Take them off the roller. It's going to take it about four days for it to pull through and show you your durometer drop on the outside. But, I mean, you're going to have to kill them on the outside anyways with prep to get them down into that low 40s. Right. So you're going to go ahead and start wiping on them. Would you do that right away, or would you go ahead and let them uh, marinate for a few days before you started hitting the outside? That's what he said. You let them roll, right, for 24 hours, and then it's going to take four days for that stuff to seep all the way through? Yeah, to the surface of the tire and actually show you your true durometer drop. Okay. And and then you would start rolling the outside with the SQS, or would you would you you wouldn't be using your your outside wipe, would you? Yeah, I would. Um, you know, in order to prepare a set of tires for qualifying like that, I would just work them down with the grape. Oh, on the outside. Yep, I'd work them down with the grape to get them down where I wanted them, as far as durometer. Okay. And does the, the grape softens, but it also builds in some bite? It does. It does. The grape definitely adds a lot of grip. Okay. That's what we're looking for. We need grip. So. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, I, and I think if you read the brochure, at least when I was reading, is, is it says in there that um, when you, you coat them, it gives you, it says, hey, it, it, it goes from this durometer, you know, 10 to 20 points and... Most of the time, it's, you know, if you use it right away, it's only going to go this much, right? And if you wait, it's going to go that much. I mean, so you can fairly get a fairly good idea, I think, from from that. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, most of the stuff, if you're wanting a really soft tire, I mean, either the BTGP Red or the Grape's going to be their two main go-to chemicals. Um you know, you can soften a tire five points by wiping it once or twice, or you can soften a tire 30 points by wiping it 10, 15 times. But if you use, let's say you use the red now, you wouldn't want to do that. If, would it matter if you're going to go run the tire and it's below 40, even though you've done all your you've done all your inside stuff or whatever? Uh, uh, Remember, Randy said the red would freeze, so you don't want to use that at all with a cold tire in the winter time at all okay and plus it's slow <clears throat> getting through right so it would still quite a bit would still be in there i'm, I'm gonna assume it is it's a lot slower than the great okay got that so so say i have a tire that's at my desired uh durometer and i don't want to drop that any but i want to add bite to it what would that be your chemical that's when I typically just wipe them with the black sand. Okay. So the black sand is good for, for that. It's not really going to drop it much. It's just going to help with the bite. Correct. Okay. Okay, we got another question here, and it says, what is the max amount for the internal use? So is that that three ounces? Or no, what? I mean, I don't like to go more than four ounces. Okay. Um. I mean, I've gone more than that as far as, but four, usually four ounces is as much as I'll roll at one time. Okay. Yep. That should answer his question. Wow. It's crazy. <laughs> so now when, when you, when you, when you go to inject them, obviously you're going to pull the stem out, but you, you don't air them up after you put the prep in, correct? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you do. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I, I do. Whew. <laughs> so that's our that's our set of, of time in tires that we've now gotten ready. We've we've done our three ounces on the inside and seen what it dropped our durometer down to, and then we're going after it with the grape to drop it down to the rest of the way and also adding our bite on the outside. So then on to our our uh, main tires. You know, what uh what would you would you go about prepping them the same way basically for going for the same uh, ounces on the inside and and the same prep on the outside or would you change anything no i think you'd be safe to go with the same amount on the inside um you're relying so much on external prep 
um, when you got to get a tire down that far that the inside is not going to make as big of a difference as what it would, you know, on a racetrack where you're wiping the tire two or three times on the outside. So it's, you know, where you're not trying to get the desired durometer reading from the outside. So it's, um, it's still conditioning so, it through the tire, which is what you're after for the longevity and everything else, and to add the essential oils into it. So now you're just really working the outside to try and increase fine, the bite longer. It. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And I mean, you know, your race tires are typically going to be harder. Um, they need so to. they're going to have less chemical on the outside. Um, you know, I'd say... Anywhere your tires, what you qualify versus what you race, uh, will probably be about five points harder. Mm-hmm. You know, which I mean, you do have a lot of cautions in there. So I mean, that's another thing you got to worry about is is how many times that tire is going to fire off. Um, you know, are you ever going to run any more than a two or three lap? You know. Um, a two or three lap little sprint or is it going to go green flag for 10, 15 laps? Well, we... Yeah, that makes a huge difference on what kind of tire you need to put on for the feature. Amen to that. Yeah, because and that has happened. Like like the year Diotti won it, it, it went almost green flag to flag and the one year Berg won it for the second time I mean, it, it, or the first time. It was like, uh, boom. I mean, it was over before you could, I mean, it was like, wow, really? It's done? I was going to say second time. That was yeah. a lot of flags. Yeah, no, that was crazy. But um, You know, that softer tire, on when you've got a lot of cautions, that softer tire is always going to get back going faster on the restarts. Um, you know, it that the softer the tire, the quicker it builds up the heat. So, um, and plus the more just mechanical grip the tire has. So, you know, that's why the softer tire, as the racetrack gets more and more grip, that softer tire will run really good for a couple of laps and start to fade away because they just overheat. Once they start to overheat, they'll start to feather up some on the outside, and then they'll just start sliding. Yeah, um, they give up. You know, the harder tire takes longer for it to get going, but therefore it's better in that long run. Uh, so, you know, it's really... It's really a big guessing game in the end, anyways. But absolutely, hundred uh, percent right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is all a guess at best. I mean, so you're just trying to make an educated one as much as you can. But what about what oh, about yeah. two different ones? So you maybe you you run softer on the inside and and harder on the outside, or or do you like to keep everything uniform? Most of the time. You know, we'll run a little bit softer left front than the rest of the three tires. Um, my right sides are usually always the same, and left rear will typically be a couple of points harder. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's pretty common to what everybody else does. I mean, there's some people out there that advocate to to different than that, but I, I like yours better. It, it allows the tires to be used in different places a lot more than – uh, people that want a different durometer on every corner. That's just, man. When yeah, you... I, I know people who, who you know, they want a right rear that's five points softer than the rest of the go, or five points harder than the rest of the, you know, the right front. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, that just means your stuff's not handling correctly when you've got to run mismatched durometer of tires on every corner to get it to turn. It's really hard when you can run more than one cart. Then it's just you, you, you limit your tires so much that it, that's all it's good for. And that's the that's where I'm at, you know, because my nephew and I, we usually run several carts on a weekend, so our tires get all over the place. So yeah. when, we can, uh, when we can keep them in a, in a wheelhouse, it makes it a lot nicer. So Well, Chris, I had a quick, just quickly back to the qualifying deal. Um let's say you've done that and and, and let's just say we're, we're we're like 38 degrees or somewhere in that area what if you took one of those little propane torches and kind of warmed the tire up or or say you had some tire covers that were you know like they do on the bikes where you could wrap the tire and and, and heat it up that way would that be advantageous yeah definitely heat Heat's definitely going to make the tire come in quicker. Um, 
So, yeah, when it's that cold outside, I mean, we'll always go to the grid with, you know, not hot tires, but we'll always go with the warm tires. And and do you use the, the little propane blowtorch to kind of warm them up? Uh, no, not typically. Um, usually we'll either use tire warmers or, you know, put them in the hot box. Um, wow. I like the hot box because it also heats the wheel. So you've got... When that wheel's warm, you know, it's constantly radiating heat out to the tire as well. Yeah, you won't lose your heat as fast as you will if you just was to do the tire. Warming the mass. So let me ask you, you remember, you know the big cars? A lot of them run those those big foam mud plugs. Uh-huh. So if you were to heat those tires up in the hot box, rim and everything, pull them out, put them on, and shove some smaller foam you know, like mud plugs inside the wheels, that would that would probably be advantageous, wouldn't it, to help keep the heat in there? Yeah, most places won't let you run anything like that on a go-kart, though. Oh, they won't. I mean, it's technically against the rules to have plugs. It, it would be good, it, though. It would be good for aerodynamics and, you know, maybe holding in a little heat. But, yeah, it, it is illegal. All right, I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. Flying objects are not good. Yeah, even foam. So if you had like moon covers, you couldn't you couldn't run those either. <laughs> no that moon screwed, caps. that screwed onto the rim and everything. No moon. Caps. No. Um, I mean that's the way. I'm not sure if. I mean I haven't looked in a rule book for that particular thing lately, but I know. I know back when we actually went with the sanctioning body and us, you know, a set of rules that was illegal. Got it. Yeah. Right now, who knows what kind of sanctioning body or rule package we're going by. So Now, w- now, would you be similar? Let's just say, for example, somebody was going to run Burris. Would the, would, the, would the same application pretty much hold true? No, not necessarily. Um, the Burris stuff, I don't. I mean, the only, really, the only burst I'll roll the inside of is a 55. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I don't, um, I don't like rolling the inside of a 33 or an 11 or anything like that, just because they've got such soft sidewalls to begin with. Oh, interesting. Huh. So you're just the fi- m- mainly an outside prep on those, then? Yep. I mean, I've had some conditions where, you know, you can put a couple ounces in a 33 on a lower bite racetrack, and it worked pretty good. Um, but, you know, I, the sidewalls on the 33s are so are so flimsy to begin with, um, you know, it really kind of cuts your down your roll speed a little bit by doing the insides. That's interesting, because we've been trying to prep our burrs on the inside, and, and it's not gone well <laughs> so that would explain why i guess so huh interesting what's your tire of choice if you if you had your choice of a tire to prep what would you prep um i mean maxis just for the the fact that we you know that's what we run 95 percent of the time and um, that's just an ht3 or uh blues and pinks or what 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 what, what's the what's the maxis that you like yeah the pinks i mean that's what we're you know that's what we run the 900 pinks um you know everywhere down here i mean that's going to be your fastest tire um whether it's if it's open tire i mean the maxis are usually the fastest and everywhere else is the maxis tire rule so um we run some bursts we run some hoosiers um I really like a, I really like a Vega tire. Oh, as far as just the construction of Vegas, mm-hmm. um, I think it's one of the best built tires that we have. Um, I like Burris. Um, I'm a big Burris fan. I think Burris racing is the most economical form of racing. Um, you know, but it's just southeast. We don't have the opportunity to run them much. Gotcha. So, so prepping a say, uh, you know, blues and pinks on on a set of maxes. Would you go about them the same way, putting in the same three ounces and and uh, and rolling the outside, or or would you go about them a different way? 
Yeah, for out there, like at the for out there at Salem, I would. Um, you know, the Maxis game is is it's a it's such a science over here now. I mean, we're <laughs> you know we're we're running tires. It's not it's it's just not simple anymore. Used to like when we run Firestones. I mean, we bought the tires on Tuesday or Wednesday. We mounted them up. We rolled them on Thursday, and we raced them on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um the maxis stuff is not that way anymore i mean we're uh, the way i do tires is i do sets every couple of weeks i do multiple sets every couple of weeks just to keep tires in a rotation um everything i like to keep two weeks apart and you know we're basically we're all staying around the same durometer reading about everywhere we go we're just going to a either a newer or older compound tire. Um, you know, just the older tire is going to have more laps on it. It's going to be tougher rubber, um, which is going to work better on your higher bike racetracks. As the racetracks lose grip, we start going more towards the fresher tire that's got more grip on the outside. Gotcha. So it's, I mean, Typically, we run, you know, we can't just go mount up a set of tires, take them to the racetrack, and run them in there fast. Usually, we're having to run tires between three and three weeks and six weeks out. Gotcha. And that's uh, uh, prep prep for the for the race for the week, right? Um, it, it, for wherever you're going. Right, exactly. That's what I was getting at. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Because I know there was guys uh, for the Nationals. I mean, I know a few guys were saying, you know, it was like July, and they're saying, yeah, I'm, I'm working my tires now. I mean, that's like, you know, three or four months out. Yep. Yeah, which I think a lot of people, especially in UAS, I think they get a little bit overexcited when it comes to working tires. Um, they need to race more, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You get too uh, you get too anxious when you when you only race once a month or once every two months, and typically you you want to wipe your tires and I don't know it just makes you feel good inside to wipe a tire. It does me so um, well, I, all warm know, and fuzzy. When you, yeah, yeah, exactly. I so when you're sitting who... out there and you got two months to your next race and and you just want to sit out there and wipe your tires for two months, I mean that's that's the reason why when you look at UAS stuff. You look at lap times; they're always turning their fastest laps on lap two or three. Mm -hmm. It's because almost every single one of them are are prepped up. Yeah, you know, over prepped. Yep, definitely. Yeah, I've I've got friends that have ten sets of tires at all durometer the same and have the same grip because yeah, because they're just out there rubbing and wiping away, and the next thing you know, they're all the same. So yeah, that's I tell you, I mean I. It was an eye opener when I started running them. Um, you know, you would think with the higher horsepower that you need to be on a softer tire. You know, you need the more grip of the softer tire with higher horsepower, but it's really the exact opposite. Um, you know, there's so much weight transfer and so much, just m so much more mechanical grip on a UAS cart. You've got to run the harder tire and you got to run a tire that you can punish. Because you're going to have wheel spin. Yeah, exactly. Well, and I don't think people understand that either. I, I come from Burris Racing, so most of our club racing is uh, is Burris. Um, our, only our open classes uh, allow any other tire besides Burris. So heat cycling of a tire is huge. And once you hit that and you get to that temperature and the tire fires off, I mean, there, there's no coming back to that until you spend some time in the shop to fix it. So... You know, you don't, you know, you, you have to be very wary of that and not abuse your tires because once you get through that, it, it basically just kills everything. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. So, yeah, I don't think they do either. I've, you know, it took me a couple of races to really learn that too. Um, because, you know, there's good relationships I have with the gals when I, when I got started into racing the UAS, I mean, they still wanted to win. So, um, at that point, I mean, Robbie was dominating everything mm. and he was the one to beat. Um, I think it took me 
let's see. I think our our first, my first true race, I run second to them. Um, it was at Carnesville, Georgia. And it took me about three races before I ever actually won one. So, um, I mean, they're definitely tough competitors, and I've had to do a lot of learning on my own. No. Yeah, because they only tell you so much for so long, <laughs> right? Yeah. You start getting yeah. fast, and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, Chris, you're on your own now. Yep, yep. Um, they they definitely they pointed me in the right direction, but they, uh, you know, they're just like everybody else in racing. I mean, they want to win, too, so... Okay, now I'm gonna, we've been talking go karts all along here. Now I have a question because I I work uh, with cars that are bigger tires, and I noticed that this last week for the Chili Bowl that they are going to be checking tires for uh, foreign substances. Um, how much do you have to put in a tire that size? Um. Well, those those tires there, I mean, you know, we typically roll about 12 ounces in them. 12 you know, ounces? Like the, the, as far as the little mini sprints with the chili, in the chili bowl, um, you know, midgets and stuff. Yeah, um, you know, like a big sprint car tire. I mean, you know, we roll up into 24 to 32 ounces inside the tire. And then are they treating the outside of them then? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Because it seems like... Yeah, it, the Chili with, Bowl was always... With that... Trip. I mean, there was a lot of prep sold for the Chili Bowl. Well, see, this uh, the deal I read today on it when I was looking at it, uh, it was saying that the reason that they're checking the tires because the prep that gets left on the racing surface is making it hard to make the racing surface uh, stay together. Yeah, I read that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's what I wanted. I wanted to... Yeah, I... Yeah. I find that a hard time with that one, but I don't know what um, I don't know what kind of scientists they have to prove that fact, but <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a lot of bull. Well, and I noticed like uh, we run an IMCA modified, and IMCA you're, it's all tire preps outlawed. Period. And uh, their big thing was is they say that makes the tire come apart, so they don't want that to happen. Yeah, no, not at all. That's I mean, that is that is their excuse. There's a lot of chemicals put into. I mean, the rubber's made up of chemicals. Exactly. Um, you know, I mean, there's certain stuff like especially recaps, and you know, there's a they they used to have troubles with the recap tire. Or something people were treating the insides of the tire with stuff, and it was melting the glue, and the caps were coming off. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, now we've all got a little bit smarter on that, and but no, all these chemicals that were like, especially us as a manufacturer, what we use, I mean, what we put into the tire is good for the tire. There's nothing there that's going to make that tire come apart. Yeah, well, then that was used. I mean, that was their excuse. I do know that. I listened to. Oh, I've but... heard all kinds of excuses. I mean, you know, a tire manufacturer that plays a role in a series. Uh, you know, like IMCA has got spec tires yeah. provided we, by a tire manufacturer. We run of all on Hoosier. They don't. Yeah, of we, course, those tire manufacturers don't want you to treat the tires. I mean, why would they want you to take a tire that would be fast if you bought it every single race? Why would they want you to be able to take a chemical, put on that tire, and let you run that tire for four or five races? Exactly. And that's the, the gentleman that I work with is on the car. We... Um, it all comes out of his pocket, so we don't we don't have the luxury of a uh, a right rear uh, every week. So we do heat cycles, and we pay attention to how many laps are run on a tire. You know, we 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 really have to take care of them. You know, that way we can go the next week. Yep. Yeah, where I mean, if you just was able to put four or five coats of prep on that tire, it would be just as good that next week. Yeah, exactly. Well, all right, we got a question from uh, Jason Suchich, who's actually the promoter at Salem. Um, he said, would you prep an outlaw cage cart tire the same way as a, as a Speedway uh, tire? Because um, they, they, a lot of times they run those, they run the treads. Tread, yeah, the treads, yeah. Yeah, they're going to run treads. I mean, 
a lot of times we won't do anything on the inside of those tires. So we treat them a lot like a burst, which I mean, a lot of them either run bursts or who's your treads. Um, you know, on the treaded stuff, we mainly stay on the outside. Uh, those tires typically do have a softer side wall of, with the treaded tire period. It's got a softer side wall. Um, so I would stay on the outside and it's the same way as far as with the, um, with the heavier, more powerful UAS cars. I mean, you just can't, you can't treat them and get them too soft, especially the right rear on those things. Cause they drive so hard off the right rear. Mm-hmm. And is there a, would there be, would black sand be the one to use on that on the outside? Yeah, I mean, something that's, I mean, you've got different choices of compounds. So, you know, you're not going to do a lot of softening on the outside. So just something like the black sand that's, or like the tire tough mint. Um, you know, the mint during the week is a really good conditioner and, and just grip component. So, um, you know, something like that will work really well during the week on those, on those things. So would you just, so you put what? Just coat the outsides and. Yep. Just, I mean, three or four coats on the outside during the week and let it go. Well, now let's say you're in one of these series that are you're, you can't not supposed to do this. How can, is your chemical, does it come out? Like say they want to test it. If they have a sniffer or or, or like a sniffer with the deal coming out or where they take a chunk out of the tire and send it off to a lab. I mean, the sniffer, we can, we've got a few products that will get by the sniffer. Um, and when they send the tires off to the lab, most of the time they're going to get busted now. Uh, we went for probably three or four years, and our products were making it through all the lab tests. Um, just for the fact that the labs didn't know how to catch it. Uh, they weren't running the proper test on it. But now, you know, a lot of the labs that do this testing, they've kind of they've caught up to what people are doing as far as chemicals and, and how they're going about treating the tires. I mean, that I think they were just looking for your common solvents when they were first started doing all these lab tests. Yeah. You I, know, there's way more of a science in the art products than just the common solvents. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so they didn't really know what they were looking for. Now, I mean, they've got all the capabilities. They can find it. Uh, so, you know, I tell people if they're, if they're actually doing a lab test and they're sending the product and they're sending the tire off, I wouldn't risk it. I don't trust the lab tests because, you know, I know people with treated tires that's failed and I know people with treated tires has passed. I know people has had straight up tires that's failed. So I'm not a big fan of the lab tests. Oh, I, I, mean, agree. I think you, I think if you're going to do it, you need to have a durometer you know, even a sniffer is better than I, I feel like than the lab. But I think the durometer is the best way to do it. Well, and Randy said if they do threaten to do that, you you tell them you want to see the lab results. Yeah, they don't like to send you the lab results because a lot of times they'll just tell you they're going to send it off and just to get you to maybe admit something that you because you thought yeah, you were going to get busted. There's one local stock track here, or stock car track here. Um, they were taking samples. Um, and I know a guy that did a lot of the announcing at the racetrack. And I asked him one day, I said, you know, because they were going sampling like five or six cars a night. And I asked him, I said, are they really, you know, are they spending that kind of money to test all these cars? He said, no. He said, they go out there and sample them. He said, then they come right up here in the tower and throw them in the trash. <laughs> he said all it is is a scare tactic yeah well he said, those promoters aren't going to spend 150 dollars to test each one of those samples yeah they go they go broker than they are now right <laughs> exactly so well, some guys use wd-40 does that does that does that actually work yeah i mean wd-40 i mean the chemicals that's in wd-40 there's there's a synthetic oil in there as well as a solvent to help get this in, you know, as a penetrator. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, it could work. I mean, it wouldn't be the, uh, 
it wouldn't be what I would recommend. I don't I don't think it's a it's the best thing out there, but I mean there's a lot of stuff that you could buy that actually you know would work on the tire commercially. Well, like simple um, green. I've cleaned my tires off on my truck with simple green and they're tacky after that. Yeah, they are. Um simple green, the what you got to watch out for with the simple green and and just all the other degreasers. Uh, what we're putting into the tire with treatments is a uh, is oil based, and degreasers are made to get rid of the uh, oil. To get rid of the oils. Yeah, so. exactly. Hmm. Wow. So now, when you when you did run a heat race, or you do run a heat race, then you you come in. Let's say the track isn't dusty, like at Salem. It's going to be you know it's not going to be dusty, but when you come in, do you what do you what should you use to clean those, or do you need to worry about it and just use a wipe and and wipe it off, or or what's the ideal way? Um. Well, I mean, of course, my ideal way is our you know our tire wash. Um. You know, a product that's actually designed to be used with the chemicals we're using as well as with the rubber. And what um, and what's that stuff? The blue tire wash, the Track Tech blue tire wash. Okay. Does that? I mean, does that put in oils? Is it, or is it just merely a wash? Or uh, does it oh. open the pores as well? Or it does. I mean, it's fully intended to keep the tire from drying out. Mm-hmm. Um. So yes, absolutely. I mean, it's it does replenish a little bit of oil to it. I mean it. Um, but also, like I said, it's designed not to take anything back out. Ah, gotcha. Interesting. And now, is that a concentrate? I mean, is that something you mix with with water and and you know a little bit of last year, or or do you use this stuff straight or what? You use it straight. And I've noticed that uh, some people sell them with a special sprayer that comes with them that kind of turns it into a foam where other ones don't do that. Is that its design is to come out in a foam or is it designed to come out in a, you know, liquid stream? Um, our product's designed to come out as uh, in the foam. I mean, all of our, all of ours come with a foam sprayer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just it's basically just a precaution on our end. It would work good either way, um, but just it's just due to the droplets. Um, you know, with the foam, you don't you're not going to be able to aspirate it. Yeah, right. It seems to be a lot more clingy that way as well. Um, I've only just just discovered the the foamy sprayer because the people that I've been buying mine from don't give me that sprayer, so. I was like, ooh, this is good. I like this. And do you clean with a sponge or a rag or a piece of scotch bright or what? Brush? Um, I prefer a sponge. Oh. Like one of those sea foam ones? Yeah, just I mean I use a typical just car wash sponge. Oh, okay. Like a one you use for wax? No, I use the ones like what you use to wash the car. Oh, okay. Uh, you well, know, that, to to actually wash the tire. Will that stuff work in these guys' tire washers? Then, where you, I noticed last year at the BK, that was the first time I'd ever seen those guys that come off, took their tires off, put them in a tire washer. Before, yeah, they, it will. Um, you just got to be careful not to put too much, because uh, it'll definitely foam up on you. <laughs> you know, it might be a little messy in the pits. <laughs> no, I mean, what I like to do is, you know, I mean, we still got our wash tubs out there. Um, when I come in. I'll take and actually, you know, we'll take the tires off. We'll spray them down with the tire wash, and I'll kind of just massage it into the tire and then put it into the wash bucket and wash it. Um, You know, then a lot of times, just depending on if there's anything left on the actual tire itself, a lot of times when it comes back out of the wash bucket, I'll take, I'll spray it down with the tire wash again, uh, massage it in, and, and then clean it back off with the towel. Yeah, out here, well, we, we uh, the surface is all right, but once we pull off of our surface and on the way to the uh, scales and that, if our tires are good and warm, we, we tend to cake it on there. So we have to, uh, we have to scrape and we usually have to brush. 
um, because it's pretty good deposits. I, I know it's not that way everywhere. In the summertime, I don't have to worry about nearly as much, but the wintertime, it's, it's especially builds up on the tire, just driving it to the, to the scales before we have to get out and push. So yeah, we definitely have to get a bit more aggressive out here. Yeah. Well, I, there's racetracks around here the same way. I mean, that's one that, you know, like a wire brush works really good. Yeah. Well, what about grinding them? Do you do? You, I mean, do you do you ever do you ever grind them? Like with a, I see some guys with a flap wheel. I see some guys with a, you know, some of them got like a cut off wheel and then a and then a grinder wheel and then a flap wheel and then like a sander and. Yeah, I, typically, unless we just really tear up tires really bad at the racetrack, we won't grind them at the racetrack. Um, there's. There's some places that we will. We'll have to refinish them. I think that's just a lot to do with the actual, um, with the actual surface of the tire. You know, not necessarily to clean, but the, you know, if you got there and it, and the tires are sliding around a lot and and they get feathered up pretty good, um, we'll take and just clean them up with a, with a flapper or, um, something like that just to smooth them back out. What about a brand new tire, though? Do you cut the cut the uh... glaze off of it? Yeah, I sand all my new stuff. Okay, I usually do it with two twenty. Oh, well, that's a lot less aggressive than I. So we got another another question here. It's uh, he says so. Is the blue better than the green? Track tech tire wash. Tire wash. Um, we really we only do the blue. Um, I mean, the only tire wash we make is blue. Okay. Over time, it's kind of got a greenish tint to it, so that may be what they have. They may have some that's a little looks a oh. little green. Okay. Um, but it should say on the label "blue tire wash." Okay. There you go, Brian. Well, we got about ten minutes left. I, I want to ask. So we're all done. Main events done. Over. You're cracking the cold one. You've already kissed the trophy girl. Now what do you do with your tires? Do you do anything before you go home, or do you, or do you wait and do it when you get home? Or I mean, really, the only thing I'll do before we go home is just wash them. You know, we'll wash everything up. Um, we'll come back Monday. You know how my my schedule usually works. Monday we'll get everything out um, and just go through the tires anything that was run that weekend we'll take and flip them um you know if they need to be resurfaced we'll resurface them and you know it doesn't matter if it's if it had five laps on it or 20 laps on it i'll flip it you know just to keep tires wearing evenly and if it's got any kind of grain to it or any kind of fuzz to it i'll i'll clean it back up with the grinder Makes sense. That uh, that's. I mean, anytime you can you can wash them before you put them in the trailer is a good thing. I've I've heard several of the tire gurus say that you just don't want the pores to cool down, close up, and lock all that dirt in there. So the sooner you can get it out of there, the better off you're going to be, and the the less work it's going to be later as well. Oh yeah, well, I want everything to be pretty much clean for it goes into the trailer i want the go-kart to be clean the tires to be clean everything to be clean yeah see i wish i was that disciplined you guys are great <laughs> <laughs> my stuff's junk <laughs> at least it looks like it <laughs> oh yeah i mean our, our driver he knows that before as soon as we come off for the the last feature i mean the all the lead comes off the go-kart the go-kart gets you know blowed off really good uh gets doused down with wd-40 and wiped off and put in the trailer yeah you guys run a lot of calcium back there though so i can we understand do. that yeah that's bad yeah stuff. i mean if if you don't uh if if you don't get all, every every bit that you can off of it before you leave and you don't you know just douse it down in some wd-40 and wipe it all wipe every surface that can rust down really good I mean, you a lot of times you'll pull it out Monday morning and have a piece of junk. Yeah, so. a rusty pile. So oh, bef- yeah, yeah. So before we let you get out of here, Chris, and rest your voice, um, 
top give me top three things that 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 everybody needs to remember when they go to this BK or I guess any big event and the and the three things to don't worry about when it comes to tires. I mean, really, I think we're people try to people try to rewrite the book on it. Um, is one of the main things that I see week in, week out. They, you know, they're, they try to, they try to make it way more difficult than what it is. Um, you know, trying to have 15 different chemicals in the trailer and, and, you know, trying this and that, it just gets you sidetracked. Um, to me, if you can, I mean, I work for track tech, we make, 15 different tire treatments and there's probably four or five different things in the trailer, you know, that I take to the racetrack. Uh, I've tried, I've tried everything as far as getting off on that. You know, it's so easy, especially when you're, when you're struggling, you know, you want to grab everything that you can and you talk to everybody at the racetrack that you know, that will help you out. And next thing you know, you don't even, you're, you're just wiping stuff just to be wiping <laughs> you know you might as well took every single thing you had in the trailer mixed it all in one big gallon and and started wiping that because uh, you get brother. so sidetracked you just don't even know you don't even know what you've done um i think that's one of the biggest things that hurts a lot of go-kart racers you know, main thing is is to pick a program and just do it learn it yeah, don't um, over so many there's so many different tire treatments out there i mean everybody that wins some races and go-kart racing can mix some stuff up in a gallon jug and sell it <laughs> you know i mean that's just the way it is it's monkey see monkey do um i mean there's a lot of people that make a good living off of selling tire treatment um you know, just because they win go-kart races. Knowing good and well, there's nothing special in that tire treatment. It's the same as the next guys. But people want, people, like I said, monkey see, monkey do. They want, yeah, what's, they they want what's winning. Exactly. Exactly. But there's no magic potion out there. It's just a matter of picking what you want to work with, you know, the program. You know, make sure you've got good support and good help uh, with the program and stick with it. Learn it, and you will do a lot better in the long run than trying to jump around and trying this and that. And I, I got to say, too, is should should a guy – I mean, a guy shouldn't rely solely on this. I mean, your your setup still has to be somewhat in the ballpark, Correct. Yeah, it does. I mean, tires are, I mean, tires are 70% of the game, but I mean, it can also be used just as a band aid, you know, to, to cover up a, you know, a bad setup. I mean, a perfectly balanced go-kart is going to be easier on the tires. It's going to, yeah, a go-kart that's that's a well balanced piece is going to run good on a broad range of tires versus just that one set. Yeah, setup is definitely well. It's it's all a, a portion, you know. It's it's portion of the whole um, package. So yeah, tire prep is not the king, but it's definitely a big portion of it. Well, you know, when I went back to the insane one, Mike Dickerson was there and we, we came out of the hotel and, and, uh, you know, no doubt had, had had a few beers, but, but I asked, not, I, Mike. I, not Mike, but I said, you know, here's the deal. I said, so if I show up to the track and I, and I am, and I am way dialed, I mean, I am way dialed. But my, my 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 prep thing might not be junk, but it's not as good as yours. But your setup is about the same being off as I am good. I'm off on my tires about equal what you're off on my setup. 
you're going to beat me? And he said every effing time. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to find a good setup and a good court. I mean, that's, you know, there's there's plenty of good numbers out there to look at. It's a lot harder to get the tires dialed in, for sure. Um, mm. You know, and you've got you've to gotta dial your tires into your particular program. I mean, the the boy that races that drives our stuff i mean he's 115 pounds and and he takes a completely different tire than what a 190 pound go-kart racer would take yeah absolutely um just because he doesn't make any mechanical grip he takes a different setup in the cart different tires everything plus he's not that hard on him wearing that light exactly yeah that's 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 crazy yeah that really is crazy I well, like, I like what our own Ronnie Cox, the rocket, has to say on here. And he says, if somebody started wiping ketchup on their tires and won every event, the next event, uh, everybody... everyone's buying ketchup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, um, you know, we were actually talking about this the other day. Uh, Devin Dow um, is the one who drives for us. Uh, his his grandpa owned competition karting over here on the East Coast for many years uh, since the 60s. And, um, he said they were, they were at one race. It was back in like the eighties and, um, and somebody had come up and, and wanted to know, you know, what they were using as far as tire chemical. And he said that they had it in a blue Gatorade bottle and the chemical, they had it dyed blue, just like the Gatorade. And he told the guy, he said, all it is is blue Gatorade. Well, he said they went to the store, picked up some blue Gatorade. Next thing you know, they were out running them. So what did the Dows do? They turned around, went to the store, and got them some blue Gatorade. Started wiping their tires with blue Gatorade. So if you want to believe something, it's a placebo. If you want to believe something works, it, it's probably going to work. No, I, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, in theory, yeah. Right? I mean, you know, it, it's kind of like a placebo. I mean, you you... You're told it's the drug, and but you're really getting a sugar pill, and the guy over here getting the real stuff is told it's a sugar pill, and, you know, he don't, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, it's it's crazy like that. that yep. That's a perfect example of it. Well, it, it, it is crazy. The guy that I learned from always used to teach me to uh, put my preps in, in another person's prep container so nobody knows what kind of prep you're using, and then always leave a li rag laying around with said prep from other person so that it stinks up your pit, but that's not really what you're using. I mean, it's just everybody gets just way overthought on this whole deal. So. Oh, I know. I know. And if you tell P, if you tell everybody the truth at the racetrack, they're not going to believe you anyway. So. <laughs> Ronnie said that Gatorade will be sell, sell, selling at his trailer at nine dollars a bottle at the B cave. <laughs> oh shit! Leave it to Rocket, man. If the forty-four don't suck, he's selling Gatorade. That's right. <laughs> well, hey, Chris, man, dude, you're you're awesome. I mean, your knowledge is just is is killer, man. And uh, I appreciate all the I appreciate your candor and and just your openness to share it all. And dude, it's just super cool. I can't wait. Absolutely. I can't wait to meet you in person. Are you coming out to the BK? No, no, we're not going to make that trip. That's a that's a big adventure for us. Well, well, tell uh, tell your boss, man. You know, to maybe hook you up a ticket or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, he, he you got his number? Yeah, I, 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 okay. So if I can get you a ticket, you'll show. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right, Chris, man. Thank you so much, buddy. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good night, man. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How cool was that? Wow. wow. How cool was that? That's a, that's a wow. I mean. That's a wow moment. It, it is. A, a, a wobby wow. Wobby wow. If you didn't get something out of this tonight, then you probably need to go golfing or something else. I mean, that that was a bundle and oodle and a cachoodle worth of information. 
Definitely so. He's a very knowledgeable man. That's uh, that's for sure. Well, and you take you take combine the two shows. Yeah. Think back, uh, you know, last week and and start thinking about what he was saying versus what Chris is saying and how it all matches together. But it's in a little bit different way, you know. It, it is, but yet, but yet, in the same breath, like he said, there 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 is no magic potion. The nope. the the key is. Again, it's like setup. It's like anything else. You've got to come up with your own belief system. Hey, if you want to listen and do your tires exactly like Robbie Yao tells you to do them, then by all means, do that. You know, yeah. if you want to do them the way this guy's doing them, by all means, do that. But whatever you're doing, do it. Do it and and keep doing it. And that's that's what I take from well, it. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just, you know, he's going to give you the base. And you, you, and he's going to give you the ideas, but you got to make it work from there. Well, and like he told me today, he said ninety percent of what all these other guys are selling, they buy the they buy the a lot of the ingredients from them anyway, and well, just mix their own stuff. So, in one way or another, it, it's really all the same stuff. I mean, when you get right down to it, there might be a few things or whatever, but um, that guys remember. Safety first. Get some. Get some gloves. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, get some. Get some gloves and, and, sure. and uh, be sure you're doing that eye protection. It might well, not hurt you now, but it's that down the road, like he said. What do you say? Acute is uh, n- now, or, or acute is down the road, and and whatever it is. But just remember, you know, you might not feel like nothing's happening now, but. 15 years from now or 10 years from now, you, you could be paying the price. So make sure you're um, wearing some protection y- in a yeah. well-ventilated area. Yes. And you're paying attention while you're prepping. And be sure you're prepping while you're prepping because you still got to check nuts and bolts and so on and so forth. But just like the rocket says here, the there's a lot of info there if you're trying to learn your tires. And if that's what you got to do to be fast, you got to do it. Well, and, learn them. And, yeah, and I agree. I mean, out here we're we're a different animal than anywhere else. So if you call a guy in Carolina to, what do you, what do I need to do to my tires? What most likely what he's going to tell you isn't the best thing because he's not out here. We just got Chris to tell us what the essential pieces are, what works best with our stuff, what works best in our temperatures, and that's really the the biggest thing with with the track tech stuff. There's a lot of options. You don't want to go and buy one of everything and then do trial and error. He just gave you the ones that are going to work the best in our conditions during our winter time. So that's taken the most of the work out of it. Now it's up to you to figure out how much you need and when you need to do it. And how hard do you want to work at it? Again, it's all going to boil down to, you know, the yeah. best program is the guys that are going to, I mean, work ethic is work ethic. I mean, well, that barometer, pay attention to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely. That, that's a, a, that's a huge deal, but uh, yeah, super, super good stuff. I, I know we kept you over time. Um, you know, uh, tis the season. We're giving you presents. Yep. Absolutely. Well, that, and you know, it, a little overtime doesn't hurt nothing, but I'd sure like to, you know, wish everybody luck that's down there at the Classic, do we know? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I haven't heard anything. I'm sure we're going to, uh, we'll be hearing some stuff, and, and we'll have all that for you uh, next week. Uh, Lakeport ran over the weekend, pre-Christmas Eve. Scott Morgan took fast time honors, won his heat, won the dash on his route to uh, win in the feature, and uh, got it done in the clone division. And uh, let's see here. Following Mr. Morgan under the checkers was uh, Alan uh, Broca. Third went to August Chamati. Fourth was uh, Tim Goss. Uh, Ken Rangel rounded out the top five. Jeff Jurens, Ryan Delisle, Chris Robertson, and Christian Garcia. We're six through nine, and that was the Lake Had to Port get Endor. Run more in before the year. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Ryan Fernandez and uh, a few others. But again, a reminder: if you can, if you can do it, well, not if you can do it. I know you can do it. Take the time to get a hold of Matt Streeby, and just take a few minutes and jot down your 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 major stuff, 
Send it off to him at Matt Streeby on Facebook, or you can go to stripfestpromotions.wordpress.com and send him a, a, an email contact thing. He He's working hard at trying to do this list, and uh, he's asking, you know, uh, let's see, Berg, Berg, he gave me a, a bunch of them. Um, Berg, Berg, Diotti, Cervantes, Fernandez, Wallace, Pacetti, Southern, Passanante, Hager, the Lawrences, Travis Anderson, ES7, Bridges, um, Singleton, Carr, One Time, Wick, White, Fosdick, Hinkins, and Schmidt. Get your stuff in. Those ones haven't checked in? They have nothing. No. Oh. Mm. Let's see. I think Fosdick's on there now. I've okay. seen it today. So and if thanks. you can, take a minute. He's trying to do us a favor. He's trying to hook us up, give us some uh, good promo and stuff for your sponsors. So, well, not only that, we do him the courtesy you of get, you get it out around town. We got thirty five, forty of you guys there. We're gonna get some people in there. That's gonna help them out. Yeah, I, yeah, it could be. And this is and this is gonna be probably the most competitive BK yet to date. Um, I, I I think. I mean, they've all been competitive, but it's just a matter of what drama is gonna play out. Who's going to run out of gas? How many cautions are there going to be? Who's going to lose a wheel? Who's going to lose a wheel? Who's going to spin on their own? Mm-hmm. It's going to be... It, that's that's what the BK is all about. And that's... Really, that's the the beauty of the whole thing. I mean, it's going to be awesome. But, you well, know... And that, that and celebrating Buddha himself. Oh, absolutely. That, that, I mean, that's still, really what it's... I mean, that's what we're there for, but... I was so impressed with that last year. I mean, that was my first time at one. I didn't know Buddha. I didn't know... I I was impressed with the way... That was what everybody was there for. Mm-hmm. It was to celebrate Buddha. Yeah. That's that's cool. And, and like, and you know... that's All I can tell you is... I never met him. But he must have been a hell of a guy because... He had. He's got everybody in the world, basically. Uh, you they, know. they know his name now. If they didn't, and, and 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 Ronnie said he was that way. He he, the bigger, the badder, the the, you know, the better it was for him. And so this is uh, this couldn't be any better. Tenth annual. Um, just keep in mind, I'm on the list, and so is the Iron Man. We're the last of the uh we're the last of the bunch. Every he's made every single A main to date. And be interesting to see what happens in ten. That's a that's a big feat. That's he, a big feat. He's gonna make this one. He too. is. I, I he I know he is because he's the best closer in the biz. He'll find a way to be there at the end, but um anyway guys, uh man. Don't forget Salem this weekend. Lippy's going to be down there yeah, running his yam out. We're going to see uh, if anybody can put Fow to bed. He's been uh, mighty strong. You, you plan on Ronnie being here on the 17th, right? Uh, Ronnie will be here on the, yes, we agreed on the 17th. So cool. we'll be having a uh, full-blown BK show. It'll be 90 minutes of uh, uh, Ronnie, you know, he'll just be here so he doesn't get fined. And... <laughs> You know, and it'll be uh, the 44 sucks. Um, And no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) He'll be here. We'll have a full show on the Buddha. We'll be talking about, you know, who's going to do what. We'll get some predictions in there. So start uh, making your making your list. And uh, I guess we're going to wrap things up. Lip, you got anything? Uh, Good luck to everybody at Arizona. My pick for KT is going to be Welker. Oh no! Well, who's the guy? The three that w- uh, that would have been. Um, I remember his name too, but uh, you know, and Fernandez is in the uh, super stock. Did you see his? Uh, Look like he didn't have a US, but he had a super stock on there. So we'll we'll see uh, how that goes. My pick in clones, Renee Angel. Oh yeah, I forgot yeah. about her clone ride. Here, yeah. here, here you go. Here, here's suits to say him. Bailey Jean's taking Phil down. Mm-hmm. Those are big shoes. Hope Ma- so. Make sure she's got weight on. <laughs> <laughs> she's got to get by me. That's right. 
And dang. Well, are you and, sure, and, sure and, does and, she want to be in front of you, though? I don't know if it's safe <laughs> well, to be anywhere uh, well, around me. Michaels is not going to want to be in front of him. <laughs> well, Michaels is That's down. why he's not here. Yeah, he's yeah. down four-wheel. He said, I'm, I'm down. Tell Lippy I'm not coming anymore. <laughs> he just Ouch. needs to not be sideways in front of me. That's the best. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we appreciate it. Don't forget, uh, we got a big weekend coming up. Uh, Salem Speedway. Be there, man. Make this one of the biggest ones. Again, we had 63 entries. If we could top that, that would be uh, that would be just super cool. Lippy will be there. Rossmeyer will be there in Yamaha. That's going to make a whole nother game out of it, especially mm. with Rossmeyer there. And uh, so, hey, it's going to be an interesting day. I don't know how many UAS is there. Sean Carr, get down here. Kevin Bridges. Get down here. We want to see if you can roll it like Rusty and uh, make it happen. Make it happen. Come on down. And Lippy, when 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 you're out of prep, what do you do? Hit the high side. You, you hit the high side. And remember, guys, race in the moment and expect the unexpected, and you'll be good. Take care. <laughs>